Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and the other day Apple released iPadOS 18.5 RC or release candidate. iPadOS 18.5 RC is available to developers and public beta testers and as long as there's no additional issues this should be the final version released to the public just released early to developers and beta testers. Now if there are additional issues we'll see an iPadOS 18.5 RC2 and then a public release. We'll talk more about that a little bit later on. Now iPadOS 18.5 supports all iPadOS 18 supported devices and this came in at a fairly large 7.52 gigabytes. Anytime you go from a beta to a final release, it reinstalls the whole OS and is going to be a large install. This released alongside many other updates such as iOS 18.5 RC, watchOS 11.5 RC, macOS 15.5 RC, tvOS and HomePod OS 18.5 RC, visionOS 2.5 RC, iPadOS 17.7.7 and a few older macOS updates as well. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go into settings, then we'll go to general, then about. And as you can see, the build number is 22F75. And like I mentioned before, if there's no additional issues, this should be the final version released to the public. And we could have the same build number, but we won't know that until it releases to the public. Now, the first time I turned this on after installing the update, I was greeted with the hello screen. That's just basically a couple different settings or steps you have to reconfirm. And then we're at the home screen. Now, as far as what's new, well, there's a few things this time around. The first thing has to do with screen time. If you're using screen time and you're using this with a child, if they go to enter their password, you'll now get an alert on your iPhone that they've entered their password for screen time with the screen time passcode. So that's something that's new just to alert you that maybe they're checking their time or trying to get more time. Another update they've made has to do with purchasing. So if you're using the TV app, maybe on a third party device, such as maybe something along the lines as an LG or Samsung TV, maybe you're purchasing something using the TV plus app. You can now confirm that purchase on the iPad and verify it here. You can do that on the iPad, iPhone and Apple watch as well with this update. So that's a new update that they've released this time around. Another thing they've updated, depending on where you live has to do with cellular. Now this is a cellular iPad, so I do have cellular data, but if we go into all of our apps here, we'll go down to apps go down to messages. Now within messages, if you're syncing your messages across from your iPhone and you have geo in India, you'll now have the option for RCS messaging. This is something you'll have to make sure is enabled. And as long as you're talking to someone that also has RCS, it should now work. So that's something that's been updated along with 5G standalone for Airtel. So if you have cellular data under your cellular data options under data, 5G standalone could now be working on more carriers as well, as well as emergency SOS via satellite in the UK. So all of these features hopefully will be available to you. Of course, it's carrier and country dependent. Another change Apple has made this year has to do with wallpaper. If we press and hold swipe over, you can see the new pride wallpaper is available. So if we go into it, swipe home, you'll see it's animated every time I swipe. So that's been updated. And on the iPhone, it has a nice little pattern. Once you go into the always on display, but you'll see it there. You could sort of see the lines in there where it fades in. Let me do that one more time. And that's an update this time around. So let me unlock it here and get back to the home screen. This goes along with the yearly pride bands that they introduce. So we've got the watch face on the wallpaper on the iPhone, the iPad, and then also a new watch band to go along with it. So all of those are new as of this week and will be available with iPad OS 18.5. Another new change has to do with mail. If we go into mail, you'll see I'm in the inbox here. If we tap on the three dot menu, you'll see that we now have show priority and show contact photos. They've removed this from having to go out into the settings app. You can now change it directly here to show the contact photos if you'd like to. And if we go back to the categories view, so let me switch this to categories. You'll see that we have primary and we now have a little hint that there's something more over to the right. If we swipe over to all mail, you can see that here. So it's just giving you a little hint that there could be more off to the right there with a little UI update as well. Another update they have has to do with settings under settings, go to general, then go to about, and then go to your limited warranty settings. Once that loads, you'll see your limited warranty for the device, of course, your serial number and more, but also your device is covered for, and you can learn more about your benefits and overall warranty. So that's something they've updated as far as the overall interface goes. 
If we go into the news app, wait for it to load here and then go to food, you may be presented with a new splash screen that pops up for the first time. We have a new recipe catalog with all the new information from iPadOS 18.4. And sometimes you'll get a new splash screen if you haven't been in this before. So it looks nice. You've got, of course, all of your different recipes and more. Now, as far as any other releases, well, there was a new release just today. So depending on when you're watching this, if we go into the music app, let me find that here. And if we go into music under the new tab on the left, or if you've got the bar at the top, you'll see a new viral chart here. If we go into that, it's from Shazam. If we tap on more, we can read it here where it says, forget everything you thought you knew about viral music. Shazam's new viral chart playlist doesn't just track TikTok hits. It captures the full spectrum of songs blowing up right now, whether through streaming, socials, TV placements, or that random 2004 banger suddenly resurfacing at bars and baseball games. Here you'll find today's fastest growing sounds from around the world, identified by millions of curious listeners frantically hitting that Shazam button. Check back every day for updates. So that's something new, even on iPadOS 18.4 or older versions, you should see this as well. So that's something they've updated, and it looks like they're going to update it daily. Now, there won't be any new Apple intelligence updates in this update, it seems. We do expect more, maybe for China, with the next update with iPadOS 18.6, but at this point, there's nothing new there. Now, another thing worth mentioning is just next week, we should get some new announcements for accessibility. Last year, on May 15th, we saw iOS and iPadOS 18 features that would be coming with the next release, such as eye tracking, music haptics, and vocal shortcuts. So Apple typically goes over these every year, and we can expect these as soon as May 15th. 15th. As far as bug fixes or anything else, well, we haven't really seen a whole lot, even in the notes here. So you'll see this here with the Apple Vision Pro app where they resolved an issue where they fixed that with iOS and iPadOS. Basically, it would have a blank screen and they fixed that issue. There's a new broadcast extension, and then also they've resolved some issues. This is the same notes that we had from Beta 4. So not really anything new here. We just have resolved issues for security, known issues for Siri, and resolved issues for StoreKit and H. HVF, as well as writing tools. So not a whole lot new here. There's probably more bug fixes, but they haven't really mentioned anything publicly. Of course, we can expect some security release updates as well, but Apple doesn't update this until after it's publicly released. So I would expect quite a few of them. Typically every major release, we get a lot of them and I would expect that here. So I'll leave this in the description below if you want to check it after it releases to the public. As far as if you should turn off the beta now, well, at this point, again, we could have an RC2, so I would probably just let it go for this time. So if we go under software update, typically you want to leave that alone until after the public is released. It could be the same build number as this, so you wouldn't have an update, but if they do update the build number, you'll see it here, then you can turn that off if you no longer want to receive betas. Now, as far as when to expect the public release, well, I would expect this as soon as Monday the 12th. That's typically when Apple releases updates is on a Monday. They could postpone it a little bit, but typically we'll see it on a Monday, so I would expect it around the 12th, usually around 1 p.m. Eastern time. Of course, I'll let you know as soon as it's out. And then the following days, we could see iPadOS 18.6 beta 1. Of course, we're just a little bit ways away from iPadOS 19 beta 1, and we should see that on the 9th in June at WWDC 2025 with betas throughout the summer, and then a public release typically in mid-September before the new iPhone launch. So we do expect all of these releases very soon. Of course, most people are looking forward to what iPadOS 19 has to offer. As far as performance, well, I've been using this full time when I'm not creating videos and editing videos, I typically use the iPad Pro. So whether that's consumption, notes, ideas, and things like that, I haven't noticed any difference here with performance. It seems to be performing really well. Overall ProMotion is nice and fast, whether it's scrolling here, you can see the smoothness just going between different screens. It seems to be very smooth. Opening and closing apps is nice and fast, whether it's the camera going into anything seems to be very fast. So no complaints here, but we are running the latest processor. When it comes to heat, it's less of an issue on an iPad, but it doesn't feel warm at all. The back is barely warm. I've had this on here for a day or so and no issues whatsoever. When it comes to battery life, let's go ahead and take a look as I haven't taken a look in some time. You can see the overall battery statistics here from coconut battery. And if we go into battery, battery health, you'll see I have 98% capacity with 154 cycles. So we are down a little bit. The iPad is charged quite a bit. I use it a lot. And if we take a look at the battery life itself, 
You'll see here yesterday, not great, 50% usage with one hour and 33 minutes of screen on time, one hour of screen off time. Today, just one hour of screen on time, 31 minutes of screen off time. Usually I'm getting about six hours of screen on time with this. Not great, but that's usually what I get lately with it. And I don't have the brightness very bright, usually around half, but it is the cellular version as well. As far as benchmarks, let's go ahead and run those. Benchmarks completed and we have 3,711 for single core, 14,463 for multi-core. Overall, this is well within the margin of error, about the same as the previous beta that was slightly higher, about five higher for single core. So it's going to perform the same well within the margin of error. And this will probably bump up after a few days of processing in the background. So that's everything so far with iPad OS 18.5 RC. Again, we expect the final release in just a few more days. Let me know if you'd like me to regularly cover iPad OS as many of you have been asking for it, but I just thought I'd do that this week to see how it goes and see what you think of it. If you want me to regularly cover it though, I'll continue to do that. Just let me know in the comments below. Of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.